Acunetics helps thousands of organizations secure their websites and web applications across the globe. Whether you're a one-person team ensuring the security of a few websites or a large organization interested in automating your web vulnerability assessment and management, Acunetics is here to help. Hello, my name is Anita D'Amico, and I am the CEO of Code DX. Now, most of my time these days is spent as an executive of an AppSec company, but my background is actually as an experimental psychologist. And for most of my career, I've studied how to improve human performance, including technologies to improve, improve human performance. And so for the last 10 years, I've been looking at application security and ways to improve the performance of AppSec analysts and to help software developers develop more secure code. So it wasn't surprising to me when about two years ago, somebody came up to me and said, can you join a panel on diversity? We'd like to discuss diversity in AppSec, and we'd specifically like you to talk about how can diversity improve the performance of application security analysts or software developers. So I thought about that and I said, you know, I don't actually know if diversity makes a difference. I hope it does, but I actually don't know about what scientific studies have been done that look at how diversity affects secure software development, software development in general, cybersecurity, or even just team performance. So I decided to do a quick literature review of this. And some of the things that I uncovered, I am going to present today. So today's session is an attempt to answer the question, does diversity have an impact on software and security teams. So first of all, a lot of people want diversity. People talk about diversity in, in a very positive way in general. They say we need more diversity in the workplace, that a more diverse team is likely to develop a better product. They talk about diversity is essential for the success of a business. And so, People want to believe, and I certainly want to believe that diversity has a positive impact on a team or a company. But what is it that people actually expect from diversity when they say it's, it's good for the company or good for the team? Well, one of the things that people expect is that there's going to be more innovation and creativity from a diverse team. They also think, especially in security, that you're going to have an expanded set of solutions or different ways of looking at a problem. It might yield better quality or security. Some companies think that diversity is going to improve their bottom line. And certainly people are interested in diversity, improving the rest of the team's cultural insights and in improving employee engagement. So that's what people hope diversity will do. But what does it actually do? Well, before we answer that question, we have to look at what is diversity. Now, most of the time when people talk about diversity, they're talking about surface or demographic differences between people. These are things that are immediately visible, like uh, age or gender or race or physical ability. But there's other types of diversity. There's cognitive diversity. These are different ways that people approach solving a problem or thinking about a problem. There's personality diversity. We've all worked with introverts and extroverts and people with different personality uh, types in, in our teams. There's neural diversity. There are people who vary along the autism spectrum and who approach a problem differently based on uh, their neurophysiology. There's knowledge diversity. That is the different types of expertise or knowledge that people bring into a team. And then finally, there's personal value diversity. People come to a team with their own set of morals and beliefs and values, which can be very different from each other. So those are just some of the types of diversity. And today I'm going to focus on three types, surface diversity, knowledge diversity, and personal value diversity. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the impact of these types of diversity on team performance. So let's talk about surface diversity. 
this is the type of diversity that is easily visible. It may be age, race, gender, physical ability. So do you think it makes a difference on team performance? Well, in fact, there are mixed results. Sometimes it's beneficial and sometimes it's not. So let's take a look at one area and that's innovation. Uh, there's a, there are people that studied the impact of diversity on the, a newly formed teams. And they looked at the quality and the quantity of innovative ideas that came out of that team. And what they found was that when you add race, age, or gender diversity, it actually had no impact on the quality of innovative ideas. But there were differences on the number of innovative ideas. And in interesting ways, if you add in racial diversity, you actually increase the number of innovative ideas. But when you add gender diversity, there are actually fewer innovative ideas. And that got people to thinking about, well, why is that? And one of the theories about this is that when you introduce, let's say, um, women to a mostly male environment, they will feel a little bit threatened and may not actually speak up. They're afraid of either being criticized or, or, or being uninformed. And so they don't actually add to the discussion. And we're gonna talk more about that later. But there's other work that's been done on innovation and that's looking at it at the company level. And when you look at innovation at the company level, the more gender and racial diversity that a company has, the more innovative they are. On the other hand, when you add in age and ethnic diversity, it really has little or no impact at the company level. So now let's talk about knowledge diversity. Knowledge diversity are the variations in the types and the depth of knowledge, training, and education that people bring into a team. And what has been found is that knowledge diversity is highly beneficial to software and security teams. In fact, if you increase knowledge diversity, then the software that is produced by that team is better technically, it's more aligned with user requirements, and it's more easily adapted to changing requirements. Now, there's something at play here, and we're gonna talk about that. It's called team cognition. That knowledge diversity increases team cognition. So let's talk about team cognition. Team cognition are the mental models that each team member bring into the environment. And when they share those mental models, it helps them in coordinating their work with each other. And what you want to get to is a shared mental model across the entire team. So there are certain things that help team cognition. One of those is transferring knowledge. It doesn't do a team much good if people just sit back and keep their own information to themselves. You actually have to transfer the knowledge to each other in order to achieve a, a shared mental model. And one of the ways to do that is, the first thing is that you have to tell people, this person's expert at this, this person's expert at that, so that they know who the go-to person is. But there's other things that you can do to foster this team cognition. One is gender diversity. The studies have shown that when you have a more mixed gender team, there is more of a transfer of knowledge across the team members. Now there's some things to avoid. And one thing to avoid is specialized jargon. That when you have a team that's comprised of, let's say experts in three different domains, each domain has its own specialized jargon. And if you continue to speak in your specialized jargon, it impedes the transfer of knowledge. So you have to think about how you're going to talk about your expertise in a way that doesn't use the jargon of your expertise. And if you uh, reduce it to more of a common vernacular, then you're going to have uh, more sharing of knowledge and greater team cognition. 
Now there's also other things that you can do to uh, improve team cognition. And that is more face-to-face -face meetings and more phone conversations. But email doesn't really make any difference in team cognition. Emails <clears throat> is one of those things where you throw something over the fence to somebody. You say, here, read this. And there's no exchange back and forth. Whereas when you have face-to-face -face meetings or you have phone calls or video conferences, there's a give and take, there's a back and forth. And that is what helps the transfer of knowledge and what helps to create the shared mental model. Now there's other things at play. In, when you create a team that has knowledge diversity, you are creating different perspectives on the same issue. And when you have those different perspectives, what happens is that there are a lot of small task-related conflicts that occur or tensions in the group. In fact, there's a name for it. It's called constructive conflicts or cognitive conflicts. And what happens is when people present those conflicts and they debate them, they debate their goals, their procedures, their courses of action, they start to come to a resolution of the conflict. And when they do, they get better solutions. Now, what this does is it avoids group think. Groupthink is that condition under which alternative explanations or solutions are just not assessed. It's like having your blinders on. That's what groupthink is. You're not thinking out of the box. But when you have knowledge diversity, then you can entertain other viewpoints. And the last thing that knowledge diversity does is it gives you an opportunity to be more flexible in matching skills to tasks because you have more skills available to you. So it adds to the efficiency of the team. Now, the last type of diversity we're gonna talk about is value diversity. Value diversity are the differences in personal values that people bring into a group. They might be their morals, their deep cultural differences, religious or political beliefs. And they are not something that's easily visible when you first meet somebody, but it's something that you learn about somebody as you work with them. Now, when you study this in the scientific literature, they, they have certain words that they use to describe some of these beliefs or, or values. And so here's just a sample of them. Uh, so a value would be a people who are motivated or identify with, let's say, power or prestige. You know, we've all met people who are trying to grab the glory and those who are not at all motivated by that. There's cultural tradition. Uh, there's benevolence. So some people want to do things that are for the good of everybody and others are hedonists. And they really want the quick win and what's good for them. There, there are the conformists. And then there are those people who want to do something different just for the sake of being different. And there are those who value security and safety and those who are risk takers. So these are just some of the types of values we're talking about. So how does that affect team performance? Well, it turns out that it's actually not very good for team performance. What value diversity does is it creates value conflicts and tensions in the group. And unlike those knowledge tensions, those knowledge conflicts, the, the value conflicts are something that are deeply entrenched. You're not going to change somebody's mind about, uh, about something that is a deeply held belief in, in an hour or a day or even a week. And so what happens is that those conflicts impede the ability to work productively. And so when you look at software production, uh, and you have a highly diverse team with respect to values, what we find is that it actually affects the, the quality of the software that they produce. So software performance is not as efficient when it is produced by a team that has a lot of value diversity versus a homogeneous team. Similarly, software that is uh, developed by a highly diverse value team is less adaptable to changing requirements. So that's just something to keep in mind 
as you start working with a team that may have a lot of diversity of values. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about managing a, a, the composition of a diverse team. So suppose you want to add diversity to your department, your team, or your company is, is saying, we really need to add diversity. What are the things that you need to think about? Well, first of all, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are things you need to consider. So as a software development team, one of the things that you must keep in mind is that you shouldn't keep on adding people to the software development team and explode the size of the team just for the sake of diversity. Uh, there is research out there on the human factors that affect secure software development that show that the bigger the team size, the more likely there are to be security flaws in the software that they produce. And the research goes on to show that there's a number roughly of about nine developers, that if you exceed that, you're going to have a lot more security issues in the code. So if you are adding diversity to your team, you're adding people for the sake of diversity, make sure you don't increase the size to the point that the entire team is producing less secure software. Now, if you're adding surface diversity, if let's say you want to mix up the ages or the genders or the race or the ethnicity or the physical abilities of, uh, your, of your team, there are certain things that you need to keep in mind. One thing is that people feel, if they're in the minority, they feel that there's less consideration given to their ideas. So you need to be an active listener. There's also something else that happens. If your goal is to have a lot of interpersonal engagement among your team members, uh, you have to be aware of something called fault lines, as in tectonic fault lines. That when you push together a bunch of people who come from diverse subgroups, they may work together well, but they self-organize into homogeneous subgroups as soon as they break for lunch. And so if you want this group to work cohesively it, you know, at, at break as well as during work, then you need to manage that in such a way that uh, people just don't break up into their little subgroups. Now, the good thing is that those fault lines do fade over time. Eventually people will just get used to each other and they won't necessarily self-organize self into these subgroups. But there's something different at play with value diversity. With value diversity, the fault lines are there. People who have shared common values will, will gather together into their own uh, groups. And when they, and those groups share common morals, cultural politics, and it makes it difficult for them to work with other people. It actually, those fault lines stay there and they do not easily fade over time. And what happens is some kind of intransigence sets in. So there is a type of diversity that really does make a difference and that is knowledge diversity. If you're going to put together a diverse team, first look for knowledge diversity. And if you look for knowledge diversity, some of those other di uh, diversities, for example, surface diversity may uh, come along with that. But if you try to put together a team that has knowledge diversity, you're almost assuredly gonna have a winning team. Now there's one more thing I wanna talk about and that's psychological safety. I've mentioned this before, that minority members of a team may fear that their suggestions will be ignored or criticized. This is a known phenomenon. It's repeated over and over again in the scientific literature. So you need to actively listen and establish an environment of psychological safety. So people feel it's okay to voice their uh, opinion or to, or to voice an exception to something that you said. And the studies show that with respect to software engineering, psychological safety is more important for the success of a software engineering team than the team structure itself. 
So think about that as you diversify your team and ensure that all members' views are encouraged and recognized and that people feel safe in their environment. I hope you enjoyed this session on diversity. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to contact me at CodeDX. Thank you.